I now give the floor to His Excellency Othman Gerandi, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Migration and Tunisians Abroad of Tunisia. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, Mr. Khazba Koroshi, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I wish to congratulate you, Mr. President, and our friendly country uh, of Hungary on your election to lead the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Tunisia supports the themes that you have uh, listed because solidarity, resilience, and science are indeed essential elements to for the solutions that we are seeking. We also thank Mr. Abdullah Shahid for his capable leadership during the previous session of the General Assembly marked with significant challenges whose consequences uh, envisage even greater difficulties. I also wish to thank Mr. Antonio Gutierrez for the efforts he has carried out to promote the role of our organization and creating an effective response to these challenges, in particular through the establishment of our common agenda. This agenda, this agenda is a ray of hope for the international community and this at a time when we began to think about whether it would be even be possible to overcome the consequences of the pandemic, the health care, and economic, and humanitarian consequences. This agenda, like other UN frameworks that we have supported, and like the Paris Agreement, the Sendai Framework, or the uh, a sustainable Development Agenda for 2030, they're based on equality, solidarity, and on leaving no one behind. Nevertheless, Mr. President, it is regrettable that there are peoples today who are threatened with being left behind because of this disbalance in the international economic system and a lack of international solidarity. There are challenges that are be being exacerbated today, whether they be natural disasters, crises, or uh, issues linked to climate change or irregular migration or the increase in the number of refugees, or issues linked to famine, malnutrition, and food insecurity, which threaten millions of people. While we must are overcoming the challenges linked to the pandemic, these issues that will be uh, felt for many years to come, the Russo-Ukrainian crisis has exacerbated these issues. Indeed, the world is facing an acute energy and food crisis due to uh, perturbations in the uh, supply chains of the world. There's an unprecedented increase in the price of foods. There's a decrease in uh, purchase power, and there are significant increases in uh, interest rates, and inflation. This is a critical point in our common destiny, in our history. This is a time that requires us to find transformative, radical solutions that will allow our peoples to overcome the current circumstances and to uh, strengthen both durability and resilience. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I 
our peoples are watching us and are wondering whether the international community will be able to find these transformative solutions and whether they will show the required political will to overcome these global crises that continue to worsen. At each session, new issues are added to those that remain. Today, we must find the solution so that they do not become the problems of tomorrow. Are we able to address the issues and solve these problems for the generations to come? We must find these solutions. This is only possible uh, if we lay aside traditional policies and solutions. My delegation reiterates that crises must be addressed from the roots if not, then it is but a temporary solution. We have not seen effective or uh, innovative solutions to crises that have faced us. We must find new, just solutions as proposed in our common agenda, the Secretary General's proposal. The consequences of the 2019 the COVID-19 pandemic and the crisis in Ukraine has forced us to re-examine our approaches. We must save the SDGs before it's too late. This is also an issue raised by the Secretary General. I wish to reiterate the following points. Firstly, these solutions can only be developed through multilateral action and in the spirit of solidarity in coordination with the United Nations while preserving the other frameworks and mechanisms as vectors for this coordination. These frameworks and mechanisms complement and complete this coordination without competing with it or weakening it. This is what my country has noted while welcoming on the 27th and 28th of August this year while hosting the eighth session of the Tokyo Conference on the Development of Africa, TICAD 8. Here we were able to discuss many of the items inscribed in our agenda, including achieving sustainable development through approaches that take into account the economy, security issues, and humanitarian issues. Secondly, there must be an economic model developed that focuses on quality and not on speed of economic growth, in particular through investment in modern technology and science. In the island of Djerba in November, Tunisia will host a summit of the Francophonie on digital issues as vectors for diversity and innovation. This summit should allow us to achieve our common goals in digital aspects as well as in development. Thirdly, it is time to move forward on debt management through new approaches. We must adapt the international monetary uh, order or financial systems. This must be based on national specifics and on national needs, in particular in developing countries and the countries of Africa. Those who have not found the support expected in their efforts to overcome the challenges and to promote growth and achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, something that the Secretary General has confirmed by describing a, an international financial system that dis, has disappointed developing countries. My country is restructuring its debt and creating uh, projects that would generate wealth. Peoples m must be able to uh, regain the resources that have been stolen from them. Fourthly, we must focus on commitments to Africa on the basis of, of equal partnerships, equality, uh, and there must be uh, better development of the African continent.
continent. Fifth, we will not be able to overcome the current challenges without bolstering international peace and security on the basis of the rule of law and international legitimacy. We must work together to overcome these disputes through peaceful means. We must end these absurd conflicts. We must refrain from creating or causing crises. And we must find solutions to these just causes. First and foremost, the Palestinian question, which requires the end of occup occupation and create the creation of an independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. Sixthly, it is important to recognize that each country has its own challenges, its own problems, and its own characteristics. There is no universal model that would be uh, one size fits all. There are principles and values that unify us that we must respect. However, the details and the choices are incumbent upon each state in its sovereignty. Democracy for Tunisia is a national choice, one that it will not deviate from. We are working to bolster democracy and preserve it uh, through a reform process which will be uh, completed through the parliamentary elections which will be held on the 17th of December 2022. This is the will of the people of Tunisia which uh, are committed to ensuring the preservation of its freedoms, its security, its constitutional rights, uh, uh, the rule of law, and the sovereignty of its people. In different regional and international bodies, Tunisia has reiterated its commitment to human rights, to its promotion and protection, and has contributed through many initiatives to the UN system and is always on the side of our human, our universal common principles. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, current challenges require us to show true common will to overcome this uh, st stage of analysis and to move on to actions. We must be able to bolster multilateralism. Our peoples do no longer want to hear empty promises. We must be able to restore trust in our national and international institutions so as to move forward on our common goals and to build a better world for us, but also for generations to come. A world of security, a world in, of humanity, prosperity, and sustainability. I thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Migration, and Tunisians abroad of Tunisia.